Yeah, good. Okay, what what can I what I what I see here? Uh, for Dario, my agile is still to be to be formed. Okay, let's make it easy. Dario, can you yeah. tell me what what is your agile? <laughs> Well, as, I, as I said during my introduction, I'm, I'm, I'm quite new to Agile. I've just started to uh, get myself around Scrum. Um, and in the sense of that, uh, uh, I'm using some, some key facts about Scrum, like uh, increment and, and uh, releasing something potentially uh, releasable. So I'm, I'm quite new. I know the concept. I don't have an Agile approach yet. Okay, cool. And Catherine? Yes, uh, it was interesting to, to put myself and my brain in something in this frame and, and I didn't think too much. So I just let go of my creativity and wrote this because it is in relation with my methodology or my, my way of, uh, of uh, um, uh, arouse the, the creativity and the agility. That's it. Okay, so your agile is deep and vibrant. Uh, it's yes. a, a deep, vibrant wave connected to the power of love and desire. Yes. And, and when your agile is running well, is run, running like what? Say it again. And, and when your agile is running well, good. Yes. Is running like what? Uh, like Ferden, uh, the chevaux. Oh, horses. Yeah. Yes, flying horses. Flying horses. Yes. Yeah, I love it. I'm the unicorn. Love it also. Yeah, <laughs> I expected an orgasm, but anyway. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ahmed. Uh, in what <laughs> you know, are you doing? Tell me. Well, uh, one of the companies that I worked in agile uh, environment with Scrum, with Scrum in one of the case that uh, business analysts had written something and none of the developers uh, did understood it. So that was something <laughs> that was down. <laughs> so we had to schedule a, a meeting to clarify what uh, did she wrote. So that's why I wrote that uh, our team had uh, problems. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. Good. Thank you so much, Tilman. Yeah, I wrote my agile is pragmatic and curricular. What do I mean with that? Um, I'm currently at a customer who got a really dogmatic approach some years ago, and they are still struggling with it. So um, my, my main job at the moment is to deconstruct why they do things. And so I'm, I'm back to the questions, not to the answers. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you so much. Uh, who wrote ability to continuous adaptation, evolutionary transformation? This was me. Yeah. <laughs> well, coming from a systemic uh, background, like it's for me, it's like one of many approaches to uh, to keep a system like in an evolutionary flow. Right, so to to always be be in in like in resonance with uh, with the environment, all the changes happening inside and happening outside, and still to have some kind of a, a good structure or like a well, let's call it framework uh, to kind of to manage that and to to keep it in an organized way. But for me, this like this uh, ongoing uh, uh, flow of um, of transformation means always. To have a consciousness for for ongoing change that for me is the essence of it. So yeah, I like it. Very good, thank you. Um, who wrote my agile is freedom? Uh, uh, that was me, Georg. Um, <clears throat> yeah, coming if, coming um, to agile from uh, from a traditional waterfall software development. Uh, which was causing really a lot of pain, a, lo a lot of friction, a lot of delays. Uh, Agile really, really helped uh, to to get projects uh, uh, done faster. I would say, 
much more to the point and also make the whole development process m much more fun. I think that, at least from my point of view, this was the, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> the biggest benefit. So it uh, really re relieved a lot of uh, tension we were having before. Excellent. Thank you so much. I have here strung struggling in a mixture, mixture of of you always did this way. <laughs> Who was this? Michael. Is that Michael? Okay, I don't know. Um, who wrote, uh, oh, this is Dennis. Yeah, yeah, my Agile, I was, yeah, I have many, many, many things about Agile, but in the last, last times, I'm very inspired of, um, of the re definition of the resonant agility of Mike Beadle, and I think we already heard it, right? I heard already the resonant, uh, somebody was talking about the resonance, I think it was, uh, it was the continuous adaptation, evolutionary transformation, and I heard already purpose, and I think, uh, yeah, uh, there has to be a purpose, a context of a purpose with all people involved and focus on, on people in, when we talk, when I talk and what I understand about Agile, and also to improve the experience of the people who make part of, of this yeah? and this has to be the gain uh, win-win situation for for everybody when we when we talk about agile and uh, put put agile in the in practice and also uh, always improving uh, i'm i'm in, like inspired a bit uh, about about this this definition of the resonance agility at the moment okay sweet excellent um Virginia, do you have an idea what how your agile is looking like? My agile is sorry, my I had to reboot, so I couldn't write it down. But my agile is a athletic person who can adapt to anything in any situation that the defense throws at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Did I miss someone? Let's check. Anne Catherine, Oscar, Dennis, Virginia, Andreas, Michael. Oh, we didn't get Michel. I had a problem with the mic. I think now it should be working, is it? Okay. Yeah. I hear you. Okay. So what is your R job? Um, I'm in a mixture. It's, a, it's mixture a mixture of what and what? Uh, of everything you heard so far, of everything you you are afraid of, everything that keeps you off from doing, and everything that makes you unbelievable powerful within an explosion when it's working. Is it is this the is this uh, is that a sweet sweet mixture or a bitter mixture? It's a neutral mixture, <laughs> a little bit of everything. So that's you have the, the big messes and you have the big successes. Yeah, that's good. I love it. Sasha, I ping you. Do you have an opinion on that topic? What kind of agile is your agile, Sasha? Hi. Um, Hello. Uh, I'm sorry, I just joined the meeting a few minutes ago, so I'm not quite into the topic yet. The question um, is, you got the, you got, you got the question? Uh, no, really. Yeah, it said, "What kind of agile is your agile?" So, yeah. so um, for me, agile is uh, ability to react to um, upcoming changes. Um, it's uh, it's like a hundred different things that come together and uh, uh, will form one mindset. It's like you, you are custom oriented. You are. Um, you're always looking for solutions and are not looking for uh, not doing pointing all that stuff. Um, this is all, all all this stuff is agile for me. So okay, that's okay. That's yeah. fine. Hey, 
the two guys in the audience here. Come move, move come on, yeah. come here. This is much easier. Or you can use the, the, the iPhone as a camera. It means, for me, agile means to, to be more flexible. So it means something happens and you are fast enough to adapt to a new situation. So you're not so strict. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, agile for me is um, becoming more pragmatic um, during the course of the project and keeping in touch with the stakeholders, um, keep communication going and going. So that we, yeah, that the focus on, on the project or the, we'll have to focus on the project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Did you like this exercise? Yeah. So now I will get, I will explain you why why I use this exercise. Uh, the last year I was quite bored because I was working in a, a huge company very near Heidelberg, a small software company called SAP, and um, I w had really the feeling that I'm, people are considering myself as a coach like an ayatollah. So all, all, all the well, like an evangelist. I hate this, uh, and and all the managers say, "Oh, let's do this. You're agile." I say, "No, no, no. That's this has nothing to do with agile." So I was a little bit. Usually, I'm I'm working well when I'm pissed off. So I was pissed off. I say, "Hmm, here I have a problem. There's a problem." Then I have a Google group. Uh, and a, and a group on Facebook, and I just raised up, okay, guys, and I asked exactly the same question, which is a clean question, is, hey, guys, what kind of agile is your agile? And in that group is a couple of very big thinkers, of all, most of the, the ag big agile practitioners. Usually, they interact a lot with me, and here, it was like complete silence. And uh, I have really feeling, oh, this is awkward. So why silence? Then I got a lot of info, feedback, very interesting feedback from people which are not in software development, which, from people which are maybe have been trained by myself or we work together and then, then other people just, you open, you get the freedom of speech. People are speaking out. Then I discovered there is some kind of fear. Uh, we are in this uh, imposter, position as an agile coach always we are playing cat and mouse because we are not quite sure what agile means and you have to bring people in something called agile and we have to be more comfortable so i ask myself this question and i ask exactly this same question that i asked to you to around 500 people now before starting to explain it because everyone has a feeling what Agile means. And I love to talk about this feeling. I think maybe Marcus can understand this, uh, Virginia too. Is really coachy approach is improving about the feelings you have and then talk to, and not coming with a methodology because this is not a religion, right? Okay. So now I prepared for you guys a light slideshow and because I'm lazy, I already gave this talk every, in, in Edinburgh last month. Uh, no worries, I, I didn't spend my time in Edinburgh. I make it like here <laughs> from my office in Heidelberg. Okay, it's just making just some space here because I can't see, I see nothing. Okay, that's the meetup. Okay, who I am, because a lot of people don't know me and that's absolutely fine. So I'm an Agile coach since over uh, 12 years before I was Kazen coach. <coughs> Sorry. So Kazen is for some people, this look like systemic coach or like more in the lean area. And also I have a couple of certifications. So I'm a professional Agile coach. And also I train in coaching Agile coaches to get better. And also alter, I do a lot of things. I'm just in Heidelberg since three years now because I came through the SAP contract. So uh, originally, um, my family is from Saarland. 
is at Brooklyn, that area. My culture is German, but I'm French. And uh, I work uh, globally, internationally. So last week I was in Geneva. And next week I will be, again, for SAP two days. But then I will be Mexico, whatever. And so we work a couple of mates here. So I try to, this is, I expect not doing a flat talk. I expect you really having for your conversation. And if you disagree, feel free to say, not right, I disagree, and you come. And we have a conversation. We have a deal. Yeah. Lovely. That's cool. Yes. Okay. So what do you think what Agile is? So you already did this exercise. So let's see what other people are saying. So I'll ask a couple of people like from everywhere. So most of our customers, so we have a lot of people from SAP corporate finance. I get people from six, six card payments. I got people for uh, ArcelorMittal Global. I get people from Dyna. I get people from everywhere, from a lot of countries, from Asia, from America, and I can see patterns and from every ages. Also people from the community I grew up also have here is called Play 14. So, um, and these are the results. And by raising up the questions about, I can see around patterns uh, coming out, and we have a lot of things. I can see that 47% of all the answers are really related that Agile means a certain behavior, which is interesting. People are not talking about the method. If you have 90% say, this is quantitative. And 70% and 70% is, it's a process. And the other is just bypassing the, the questions is, I have no clue, uh, or Agile is not for me yet. I'm not ready about Agile. It's just not giving the answer to the easy question. Let's dive a little bit deeper on what are the answers that I've got. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hold on, I have a small issue here, a presentation issue, I have to scroll this down because the mates in the room, they see exactly the same screen that I have, which is sometimes a bit messy. Okay, okay in the quantitative answers, people saying this is fast visible results. Agile is fast, or ask fast visible results. Or quick wins, is delivered quickly, is quality, is technical excellence, is workable software, is rapid customer satisfaction. It's about understanding that Agile is more time consuming than previous methodologies. That's not really positive. Okay. It's about seeing results and not just work in progress. It is about opportunities instead of limitation. It is about working on a topic which produces value. So this is not really precise, uh, just for, maybe, maybe I didn't mention it. It's not only, most of these guys are not in the IT, are not software developers. So maybe our customers, when you're from the IT, or maybe also work, people working in manufacturing, in huge manufacturing processes or research and development. Another point, behavior, which is quite more, a little bit interesting, it's about people say Agile is about flexibility. It's about pragmatic, being pragmatic. It's about adaptability. It's about saying no. It's about responsibility. It's about multiple competences. It's client oriented. It's putting me in the shoes of my customer to gain clear vision of his needs. It's about having interaction with customers and users at the collaboration business and development working together is teamwork, close collaboration, will empower us to work and share experiences, is trustful collaboration with project members, fully dedicated, I have the feeling that I'm moving well, motivation, happy and satisfied, consistency of projects, working on topic which fit to my skills, simplicity, meeting not that often, Sustainability, welcome change, challenges instead of problems, challenging and exciting to task with own responsibility and decision power. Uh, when you read this, what are your feelings? That's a question for you guys. 
Okay, I can I can totally totally relate with the behavior type of agile. Um, that's exactly what I meant. There are like a hundred things that come together the, that are building what is agile for me, and most of it is the behavior of the people that work together and the mindset of the people. Mm -hmm. Good. Not about progress uh, or processes. It's more um, you can build your own processes as long as you have the right mindset. Okay, that's fine. Someone else? Yeah. Look, uh, so, I'm so motivated cool. people. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Dennis. Motivated people, and uh, yeah, um, you you see a a really rich. Uh, way of uh, saying maybe the same some some of some related the same uh, stuff here right uh, adaptability um, yeah uh, welcome change uh, but you, you see that people are using different languages uh, this is very very rich you know uh, to maybe they, they mean the same thing but Put it put it in a different way but it's really it's really it's really cool i think it's really complete and and very rich this mm -hmm. all these definitions thank you somebody else yeah maybe i'd like to um to put some salt in, in into the uh <laughs> into the sauce because uh, we call it in psychology a container uh, it's like a huge container where all different like um uh aspects uh, fit in so for me it's a little bit uh, too let's say too wide and I, I ask myself maybe it would be fun to ask what is not agile because what is agile everybody would agree to that but you all can you also could ask what is intelligent let's call it not agile let's call it intelligent right and all the stuff would also fit in so just to make it a little bit uh, um, uh, uh, more like uh, to, to, to sharpen the edges. What is agile, what is not agile? Yeah, that's a good point. Very good questions. Uh, I did not ask this on purpose, but we need to get some uh, small nuances, <clears throat> sorry, in, in emotions. And for me, this is really high hopes. This is cool, uh, like uh, if you read this, all these topics, is, or people have really, really high hopes. It's like, Jesus, are you here? <laughs> yeah. As a new name, it's Arjan. I say, oh, that. <clears throat> I don't take that responsibility, right? And, but you made a point. Somebody else. Yes, I would, I would um, uh, take three words or something like that. That would be flow, excellent, excellence, and purpose purpose that makes sense and in English I don't know but maybe Pierre you can help me in uh, what is the sens du bien commun um, the feeling of common interest yeah we can say purpose okay the sense of purpose which is quite related to sens commun okay okay cool. I, I, I have an interesting perspective I'm seeing human be instead of objects yeah i find i i say what agile is not is um trying to make objects function yeah. but this is a good know. question <laughs> what is not agile okay. this can be very this <clears throat> thank you thank you so much Michel. this is a very good question for me Ah, what did I do? Yes, uh, Anne Catherine. For me, what is not agile is what is stuck. Uh, it's it's c'est fermé. It's closed. It's stuck. It's, there is no movement, no change. Okay, it's like business as usual. <laughs> it's like we already did this one hundred years ago. Why should we change? Company politics are not agile. Yeah. So, so we are facing about two debates because we are here on the locations, Baden-Württemberg, which is all the big industries of Germany. And, and this is 
the huge fight of the German culture is a very open mind in private. When they are going out to work, they are very stick to the point. And when the bots say you have to follow, they follow like lovely ch children and they never challenge it. And, and everything should be perfect and forever. <laughs> so it's the huge challenge about the Anglo Saxon pragmatism, which is for us not a good quality. And that's okay. And so it's, you have a huge change. But it's okay. Thank you so much for your feedback. I will I move forward on the next slide, which is okay. People also say is Agile is also about process. It's not the big one. Remember, it's about 70 person. Oh, maybe, Dennis, you have to make yourself unmute. It's a little bit noisy. Lovely, thank you so much. So process is about agile as a methodology. DevOps is also another methodology. It's about feedback, daily status, it's time to market, individual and interaction. So you have here somebody who read the agile manifesto for software development, which is inversion and interaction over processing tools is workable functionality over extended documentation. Again, this is quite related to the manifesto. Collaboration with customer over contract, again, the manifesto. Is incremental product development. is about well-defined roles within the Agile team. <clears throat> so here is really a more a structured mind. So I got this information, but I'm not analyzing with the traditional way of analyzing this kind of stuff. Is different minds, different perspectives. It's interesting. Then I have another point. Is also uh, all the guys bypassing the question, and I thought, the, I thought this is also interesting. Which is people are giving, just giving the wrong answer on the right question, right? Is and and when when I, if this mass is over, let's say thirty percent, meaning my question was not good, or maybe they don't like me, so I have to give the question to somebody else because my communication channel doesn't work that well, okay? So here it is, it needs to be appropriated and adapted. So it means just nothing, right? And it's still at the beginning. So people are just projecting to the solution, which is not about asking the question. The question was, what kind of agile is my agile? Is still at the beginning. But or if you're with... Yeah, right, but if I want to understand what it is for you, it's still at the beginning, it's not an answer. Right. Is some, somehow Agile, good to, see that SAP, good to see that SAP is putting focus and hoping in Agile. What is the best, best Agile practice? Give me this silver bullet, give me this special recipe so I can fix it. Currently more ad hoc instead of Agile. <laughs> so people also say uh, Agile means ad hoc this style. I like it. It's come from the Middle East. And uh, missing flexibility in daily work is a lot of meetings with wrong people, is additional projects, is status meetings needed. So, so here is my feeling. I put it here. Bypassing is you don't really have the feeling that the people answer the question. Are you okay with this? Yeah. Or are you still online, guys? Yes, 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 yes. You were so silent. I'm here. I'm afraid about silence. <laughs> Regina, I'm not like Dolph. I don't like silence. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I will come with other resources, other sources, which are all not IT and not from the IT community. Because I say we have all some kind, some kind of biases so when you say with a software developer that come agile is this 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 methodology or uh, one guy in chicago answered me agile is what 10 12 guys wrote 12 years ago is about principles and 12 wow that's not an answer for me i'm not that american i'm very quite too much german you see that's not an answer <laughs> no so let's see what other people say i love to use gallup what gallup is making they're making just uh, highlighting, this is in 2018, and you can find it for free in the, in the Gallup website. I have no shares at Gallup's at all. Uh, in operation terms, the concept of agility can be defined as employees' capacity to gather and disseminate information about changes in the environment 
and respond to that information quickly and expediently. Is it okay for you? I'll have to think about it a little bit. <laughs> so if I use the metaphor of a system, so you're part of a system, and if you, as a small part of that system, you see a defect, you see a threat, you see an opportunity, Mm -hmm. You are able to respond yourself without asking somebody in your hierarchy as the whole system is responding mm -hmm. to whatever happens, positive or negative. So meaning to get this is about to gather information. So here the change is this paradigm shift is in the command and control. So like uh, scientific management approach, the traditional, mm -hmm. the boss is right and they hand over the work to somebody or it was a commodity. You're just hired to help your boss, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like this, listen to daddy, right? And, and, and here is no longer possible. This is what you call complex work. Yeah. So you have this, uh, I guess, the Hans-Peter Nietzsche meet, um, mm -hmm. wrote uh, in German all about this, and you have some talks on YouTube. He explained the problem is the complexity of work is a single person cannot have actually the whole knowledge. True. So it's not, you cannot hand over your activity, which you don't know to somebody who knows better than you. So maybe your subordinates are better than you and that's okay. Maybe not in a, in a, in a, in a big company from one end to another, but when the, within the field of um, um, expertise and the, within the project, Another could probably not replace you to 100 percent, but um, maybe to 80 or 70 percent, because he, he or she has the knowledge gathered to gather during the project. Yeah, so the, here, so this is a paradigm shift. You have to, to think differently mm -hmm. to tackle this problem. Is is about you build a system. A team is a system. Uh, one person is not a system. Is an agent. Uh, you have to have an interaction the whole system can respond to that complex work, nature work. And so to get this done, we say data precedes framework. So you need to collect data, the amount of data give you trends, and based, based on that trends, you take decision. It's what you say, an agile way of doing things. Okay. Because all the others, like scientific management, we say command and control, or the system thinking, which is lean a case in this way, they all do it the other way around is framework precedes data. Pierre? Yes, ma'am? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. This is um, when I have read, read this quote from Gallup. It reminded me of um, the 1990s when I used to work in, uh, it's called global custody business in the financial sector where people would invest across the world. Yep. And um, we had to respond incredibly quickly. So, for example, you would have a crisis in Argentina and the government would block funds from getting out of the country. We had to re react so quickly to make sure that our clients were aware that they couldn't get access to their money. Mm -hmm. And we're talking 1990s when you didn't have internet, you know, <laughs> back in the old days. And, and I'm just, I'm some... Do you find, all of you, I'm, I'm even asked the question, do you guys all now see that we still respond this way? Is that a mental mindset that we have these days? Because I know when I was growing up, <laughs> in the, um, it, was a, it was, you had to be that way. If you weren't, then um, massive losses could happen. So I'm curious, are people actually acting this way as a normal mindset? Do they really? Or is it maybe more a kind of um, developing the, the people to that uh, point so that they start thinking this way? It's very, for, for me, I don't work very deeply in the agile world already. So um, it's, for, for me, it's more a starting point right now. No, but just rephrasing Virginia, say, uh, she is now since two, three years, four years in Agile, five years in Agile, a little bit. And this was long before that we didn't talk about Agile. 
it didn't it didn't exist at the that even even um six sigma and those things were not spoken about okay it's even before all that but that's a problem so you you well, virginia means that you were already uh, being agile even though if you didn't know the terminology about this uh, that's your point right and that's question yeah yeah i mean yeah. We, yeah, I so, think I think he, yeah, I was thinking about this, and I think maybe I don't know, uh, but when we speak about um, the continuous improvement or something like this, I think this is an inherent thing of the human beings, anyway. And uh, so, yes, this is a, when 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 Gallup puts it that way, that of course, in in order to improve continuously and being able to react to change, you have systemically gather this information and disseminate it. Yeah, and I don't know if the uh, Agile Manifest or these other things uh, had uh, changed the DNA of the of the people in, in in terms of that they can do it more quickly. You know, this this continuous improvement, or it, maybe everybody has inside uh, has it inside, but maybe the the systems and the environment uh, which we work uh, is not uh, letting us to 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 make this natural uh, agility uh, going on. You know, maybe in some some companies, some environments, it's possible more than than the others. Uh, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, but so you have to know that uh, management has also been created in the 90s. Before that, it was a little bit different. And it's quite good when you say, Anja rings a bell for me, and that's okay, because there's nothing, nobody coming in, he's working in his kitchen. So now I create a new methodology, I will call it Anja, and now I will split that around the world. Nope, that's not. But um, I would say just one, uh, maybe one, uh, one aspect. From a systems theories uh, uh, perspective, you would call this like it's complex adaptive systems, and they're always like they always do exactly that. The parts, the, constitu the constitute parts of, of a system, always uh, kind of try to react on changes uh, um, in the system environment. So I would call this this is like. Uh, uh, a normal aspect of every living system, of every organism. And uh, if we call the questions, do we call organizations organisms? <laughs> or is it like our social systems, like uh, um, enterprises, are they kind of different? But for me, I would call this uh, like, it's, it's, it's a DNA of every living and evolving system. Uh, and so uh, as soon as it stops doing exactly that I would call this uh, a dying, it's a dying system. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, I'm, I'm with you on that topic. And, uh, but this is a lovely introduction to another topic I maybe bring in a couple of months. It's about um, agile, uh, agile organization model, when you say structure is not organization. An organization is a living organism, is the social network. And the structure is more the, the, the pyramid, the hierarchy. And, and then you understand better why we are confronted. Uh, you can't. Say, I want to be, have a better organization structure. Sorry, this it's an oxymoron. They are not the same thing. But anyway, just coming yeah. in. Here. Yeah. There's something that puzzles me since Marcus already mentioned the systemic view and uh, systems theory. Um, this whole sentence. Sounds like uh, it's kind of, this is an explanation that, that you get from Luhmann about self-organization. And since self-organization is also a concept that is used within agility, my question is, there, where, where's the difference? When you say agility is the, the uh, capability of the system to react to change and to, to um, yeah, disruption, um, this is what, what self-organization per def definition is called. So w w what's the difference? So the difference is self-organization is related to a person. You can maybe say we have a self-organized system, but self-organization is you cannot have an individual system. So a system has components. The components on the system are called agents. And the agents in the system are usually people. 
Mm -hmm. So an interaction from the people mm -hmm. creates this value about how yeah, but the system can be self-organized. It doesn't have, and Luhmann was not talking about individuals, he, he was talking about systems. So um, anyway, this puzzles me. You brought up that sentence from Gallup and uh, you really brought me into a loop with myself since uh, I'm just wondering where, where the gap now is. <laughs> Tillman, this will be, I think it will be worth uh, very terrible for you because I have a second from Gallup. From a strategic perspective, this combination of speed and data-driven information is increasingly important for many businesses to maintain a competitive advantage. So this, these are the reasons why people or organization or here, leaders want to go in the agile way. Yeah, of course, um, agile is not, not bound to, to software development. It's uh, for almost everything. It's, it's a way of working, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the previous slide um, also reminded me of um, <laughs> something happened in the 90s where I acted this way within a, uh, a group of people, but it cost me the job because <laughs> it was too early for, for acting like this. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have something, if maybe tell me if I'm wrong, but usually you have a team of very motivated people who is a strong leader, who has a great vision, and the people are working with them, so they have a very strong team, and they're doing very great things. They're, they've saved the world. I'm not sure it's usually, but uh, should be. No, 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 let's say at the beginning you have this, and after one year you have a manager coming, hey, guys, this is a great job. I have another project to, sell, to save. Can you jump in? I will hand, hand over your project to another team. And this team will manage your thing. Meaning these, there's no same, not the same motivation. Mm -hmm. It's not the same passion. This is nothing more. And this is when the waste is starting. It's like a copy of a copy. Yes. Is people are just managing, doing again something that you didn't made. Right. And that's, uh, and the problem is most of, uh, all the products are running like a copy of copies, which is uh, weird because uh, it's just about saving money, cost saving, not about creating value, right? Any other opinions? We, we lost three guys. No? Okay, next slide then. So Gallup again. So agility is not here about horses and dogs. It's really about what we call also agile. So some people ask me, can you tell me the difference between agile and agility? No, it's the same thing. Uh, it explains uh, that agile is about, um, <clears throat> sorry, speed and efficiency. So uh, freedom to experiment, communication, collaboration. And this is the answer from employees of the companies in Western Europe. Okay. And they ask also these employees, uh, uh, what is the best solution for you? And how can you define, uh, why do you like Agile? So this gives me the feeling that the company can respond to a problem, meaning uh, it's no, now the things have changed because now is you're not working for a company because the brand or whatever, is because they're agile, meaning they're able to change, to react rapidly to what happens, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. And so you can be, to, you persevere on the, on the track and be sure you can work there 10 years. And not that your big company says, sorry, we cost cut it. And you fired, and then you get hired again, then you fired again, then hired again. This is just crazy. So they say, in my company, we have the right tools and the right processes to respond quickly to business needs means, okay, we know what to do and we can respond because we know what to do. Don't need six months blueprints, right? With experts and then the expert on living and you wrote all the requirements and you handed over these requirements to people in India who should know by telepathy what they have to do. Yeah. And then our, and, 
and bet you, bet you consume 80 percent of the whole budget right when you say now it's easy we know what to do and usually it's just the beginning of the mess right and the other point is in my company we have the right mindset to respond quickly to business needs and again okay one of the, of the guys in the conversation here talked about the mindset so it is completely correct any comments on that I just heard several times the word mindset and Marcus, you know I have a comment go ahead uh, Markus already mentioned the container before. For me, the HR container is actually the mindset where all the other things um, here on the slide, for example, as well, are within this mindset. Um, it's just like uh, like the Nirvana, maybe. When you've reached it, then you can fulfill it perfectly. But it's still, yeah, you can describe it with the container, with an actually open container, not a closed box. Okay. Virginia? I, I would say, I mean, it's pure engagement. You know, people are, are so excited to, to do their jobs and to, to get the things done that, um, that they're totally engaged and they have the mindset. So I'm curious, I, I, you know, I mean, why are companies not wanting to totally embrace this? That's my, my big question. Because <laughs> for me, it's very obvious. Or is it too progressive? I would say engagement is also driven by uh, is driven by pleasure, no? Pleasure to do, pleasure to share, pleasure to connect, pleasure to share ideas and make processes simple and faster and efficient. Well, I would add uh, one aspect. Uh... It says freedom to experiment, but what come, but, but it's also the ability to learn from the experiment. It's not just running experiment after experiment, but really have a, a very high uh, ability to learn. That means to process experience, to process failure, to process like ambiguity, different uh, perspectives and all that stuff. Um, and of course, communication is crucial for, for this uh, aspect really to, to work it out in, in groups and in teams and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, but communication reaches f more farther than uh, within the team and maybe the, the neighbor teams. It's also communication with top management. If top management is not has, has no buy-in into the agility, into going agile within the, the whole company, then it's, it will struggle for, um, sooner or later. Yeah, the problem, yeah. Is, the problem is not agile, the problem is the change. It's always the change. People are resistant to change. <laughs> yeah, or, or uh, I would say, um, also answering maybe the question of Virginia, why are the companies embracing this more and more, right? Maybe change is fast, more fast, and maybe people want to change and change more rapidly. Maybe the people, um, maybe if you say that people don't want to change or change is, is difficult, maybe this is changing nowadays more and more faster. Maybe people in the society and with more information available, with the new technologies, um, are now wanting all of this happen, not all, uh, only in the uh, free uh, personal time, but they all also want these things happen where they work. For example, they want to experiment. Yeah, they want to, um, every person should feel they should contribute to innovation, like a purpose thing. They, maybe people are, are sick of sitting in this silo of things in the finance department, not being able to having some restrictions of talking with the other guy around because they are working at the same problem. Maybe this, the, the society is changing and then the people, the companies must uh, adapt to this in order to ha get the people, in order to win this money, you know? I, yeah, I, I would agree, but I see two points here. One is um, from the older guys within the companies. Um, it's their way to protect their vested rights. So they don't want to change because they have the fear to lose 
uh, power, to lose uh, maybe their company car, whatever, um, when they go this way, because they, they won't have the, the power to say to people, you have to do this, you have to do this, all that stuff. The next, the second thing is, uh, it works all fine with um, testing and, and um, experiment and do whatever till the first controller comes in. If the controller comes in and money plays a role or a major role, it will get complicated, of course. So that's why I, why I say um, the upper management or the top management has to has to be bite in to this um, working agile within the company. If it's only in, in a single part of the company or in the whole company, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah. they have to support it. Yeah. But for example, uh, we, have, we see it very, very uh, fast. Um, now we see it more and more here in Brazil. The, the, the market, for example, for these developers and for these, all, all these people working in these things, are, is really hot, you know, uh, and everybody wants these these guys, you know, and if they don't have this purpose, uh, if they don't see it, and if they cannot do these type of things, they just go away. So the, the management, I think they will have also big losses more and more in the future that like they, they cannot, they, they, they will struggle with, with uh, if they, if they stayed not agile in, in, you know, I give you I give you a, a little bit hope here. So usually my customers now uh, now today they were my developers ten years ago. Okay, and they say, can we do it properly now? <laughs> <laughs> That's again. So you have a system. It's like different people. Uh, yeah, and it's not missing hope on my side. Um, it's just uh, seeing it uh, on customers I have or I had in the last um, two years. Um, Many of them are still stuck in the 80s or 90s from working behavior, from doing stuff, from communicating with customers. But uh, they also have to change. Um, and what, what was said, change is uh, the hardest thing ever. You have to get the people where they are and bring them maybe one-to-one -one into, into the new world. Yeah. That's why we have, we call ourselves agile coaches, because you cannot push things into it. We give the direction, hey, this is the way, now we can help the system, or we can help individuals. Okay, very good feedback. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, another point. So now I have other, res other, other sources uh, on what is agile. So um, I made my, my um, a, a thing at MIT last year, and I get this feedback. This is how we're addressing digital. Uh, you know, digital, everything is related to digital is more light, more sharp, more nimble, more reactive. So by default, you have to be agile. And this is how they, the MIT is talking about it, uh, why we have to do this. And so the point of attention is, when we say mindset, I'm quite honest here, I'm a big, not a big fan about mindset. This is a bucket. But anyway, about mindset is, um, we, you build a system, what we call agile, and is to make working together expected and easy. So it's not complicated to, to work together, right? is we see that matrixed organization does not equal agile. Uh, everybody knows here what matrix organizations are. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, I worked in it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, agile is a system, a matrix, you allocate resources. It doesn't work this way. And we have to learn to be wrong, meaning you're creating this freedom of experimentation. And Marcus talked about complex LFP system, it's completely right, that's the wrong, the, the correct term. Is would we say safe to fill containers mm -hmm. is not always to think and analyze everything until the end of the universe. 
then you're ready and you hand over. It's no, you have to start to experiment. This is everything we do is like research and development. Yeah. It's like an innovation process. And we have to be okay to be wrong, but rapidly wrong, not permanently. Fail wrong. fast. Fail fast, fail early, right? Yeah. <laughs> and agile organizations are grounded in strong customer centric cultures. Mm -hmm. So usually when you're in big companies, sometimes you really, really discover there's a conflict of interest. In many organizations, you have to move the, the oil tank <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when it comes to customer centricity. <laughs> I, I guess uh, uh, the mate, which is in, in Stuttgart from Austria, um, they, they changed, they call it a wheel. A big wheel. They want to change the big wheel, and uh, that's not a big wheel. This is the Titanic. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it's a, one of the most powerful adventures for our company is ability to give employees a sense of optimism about the organization capacity to survive and thrive amid disruptive marketplace conditions. Meaning, you go here, you go in a company, uh, in the company, say we are doing agile. Say, oh, my company is uh, has the weapons, has the skills to live in a chaos because the world is a chaos. Mm -hmm. Which when, when I talk with agile coaches, mate, they say, what are we? We are the only guy feeling comfortable in chaos, and people okay. need us because we are the beams, the, the light, the, the light in the fork, light in the fork, right? right? Any comments, guys? I do not agree with the chaos. Comparing to PMI, for example, uh, I would say that all those um, actually methodologies or frameworks, HR frameworks, uh, are more strict than classic waterfall principles. Yes. So, we, in my personal experience, I've seen more chaos in waterfall projects than HR projects. That's terrible. You're terribly right. I'm a former PMIer, mm -hmm. so I never saw one PMI project running well. Okay. Never. A member, I was a member of the board, a member of the PMI ACP 10, 12 years ago. I never saw a good PMI. In, in right, in Archer, you have more. You have not that much. You don't have a Bible of 400 pages. You have just 20 pages written very big. And simple, simple rules, but you have to respect these rules to have the uh, scaffolding. And for here, the example I will give just a, a metaphor from Dave Snowden. He's talking about complex analysis systems. He says, uh, this, my quote will be very wrong, bad, sorry. It's like a birthday party for his children. If you tell your children how you can make a birthday party, uh, and you're not fixing limits that will destroy your house. But if you say to the children, hey guys, you guys, you can make the party between here in that room and that room, and if I find somebody else in another room, I kill him, uh, that's okay. That will also have a good party. But you didn't destroy the room. Meaning we have boundaries. You have the safe to fill containers. So if you're keen about Scrum on this kind of methodology, here the boundaries of the system, which are the sprint, the meetings, or just we again, do we have the same system? And between those boundaries, there's no disruption. So we can having this behavior. Mm -hmm. What we discover is usually people are very skilled, but then the people are working on some topic. But you have a manager coming every five minutes, can you do this for me for five minutes? Another manager, can you do this for me? So meaning you're just a service center and you're more a cost center than a profit center. Yeah. This is a huge shift. I don't find this that much in the US, a lot here. Is, I worked for US companies, for, for two US companies and I saw the same there as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was the reason why I thought sometimes um, monotheism was a good thinking. <laughs> So usually I discover here, uh, when you mentioned Marcus about the PMI, uh, sometimes 
even people have no clue about what uh, project management means, right? Let's go to the next slide, if you like. Come on, next slide. Okay, <clears throat> so we always see when you have a system, you have to talk about values in the system. The same values is we are looking for speed of our perfection. Data over intuition is about talent over title, is about having an impact. It's not about just doing the thing, it's also does this action has an impact? Is about constant improvement. This is step-by-step -step approach. Is customer obsession, okay. Is about autonomy and transparency. Pierre? Yeah? On this data over intuition, um, we had the term data already with the Gallup slide before. In yeah. my opinion, it's rather information than data. I feel more comfortable with the already refined information and the data is something uh, in some cases I will never get. It's only the information. Yeah, but I guess we're talking about the same thing here. Data is like big data. Uh, you create a system as you, when you collect a lot of data and based on that data, you see patterns emerging and after, and you take a decision of those patterns. And if you don't have the data, you can't take the right decisions. But often intuition is also right. Yeah, but here is a lovely word to about saying is uh, you're starting a project just on a guess. Okay, over guessing, yeah, data over guessing. Yeah, but here is I'm exactly all the words from MIT. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I just make just change the design and having conversation on this. Okay, my my opinion comes just afterwards. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm not. I'm never that nice. I just love finger pointing. And values in practice are related for you is rapid experimentation is you have an idea, you have to test it first. Mm -hmm. And when your test is, uh, is okay, then you can move forward. Is fluid collaboration is if you need to have different layers, you have to go to the controller who goes to the controller, who goes to the manager, who goes to the boss, then you get the information. If you need three months to get just the feedback, forget it. So if you need, if you work with people abroad mm. and you have just a certain slot in a day and you talk with these persons and these guys and you really have the feelings, okay, they are not expensive, now I know why, and I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people just make a lot of offshore activities and indeed without saving costs, they lost a lot of money because it's not reacting, it's have the fluidity of, of uh, communication, uh, is intense customer orientation. And we have uh, one guy is, is Stephen Denning, his writing is in Agile, you don't, internal customer doesn't exist. Okay. Even if the product is for internal use? Should not. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is a good guess. Sometimes is uh, mm -hmm. when you work with a huge company, uh, 150,000 people, you mostly have internal customers, but you have to, to question the system. Uh, it's not correct. Call them stakeholders. Yeah, and, or, or stakeholders or shareholders. Yeah. And even if the change is coming from the top, you know, now the shareholders, they want to be also stakeholders. So everything is changing. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. It's data-driven decision-making mm -hmm. is based on transparency on the reality. If I don't have the data, I don't take the decision. It's not emotional, it's factual. Uh, emotional is the relationship in the system. It's not the decision we take mm -hmm. uh, because it has to be coherent. Uh, is building for scalability, fast hiring and firing, Okay, I'm not a fan of this, but that's okay. Is result oriented. We have artifacts, you have clean platforms, you have metrics, casual closes and spaces, collaboration tools, flexible organization boundaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I have just to check everything you have in the chart. Sorry for this, but I can't read it. So you have something to ask, feel free to ask. 
Pierre, what does the fast hiring and firing mean? Yes, this means is I need somebody I can hire it in a minute. So I've got this from London. People ask me, hey, Pierre, can you come tomorrow in London? We start in the project and say, okay. I was the next morning at nine o'clock in London. We start the project. We stuck together three months. Then I move, I, I come back for the weekend. I get a full call, a peer uh, project stop. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. So you're saying this is a good thing? No. <laughs> uh, okay. I, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. but, but to be honest, to be really, really fair, is sometimes I prefer this way than, uh, oh, I want you, you define everything, then you say, that's okay, I hand over to purchase. And after four months, you maybe get the feedback. You say, can you reduce your price? And then you wait again. So you, you're in the process during six months. And then you're on, you're on the company, you sign for a one year contract. And every three months you have to fight again because they cut the budgets every quarter. And even though they can fire you whenever they want. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, I understand. So, you also you also want to like harvest the fruits uh, you deserve, you know. <laughs> yes. Okay. Here is the feedback from MIT, right? You should make yeah, a yeah. on the slide. Yeah, I have to. I get. I have to repeat it. It's not my opinion, uh, but I see. But it's not wrong, right? This is not wrong from a company perspective. Uh, it's not wrong. Uh, yeah. I would say yeah. also from a pure agile perspective. Because yeah. I have very strong macho agilists, a friend of mine, they are developers, they're completely crazy. They're working for Apple Mozilla, but their office is in, in French mountains on a farm, which is, and they have eggs and chicken coming up. They're just geeks. Hopefully it's nice. For them it's okay. Yeah, it's yeah but, I, but I wouldn't agree because, because if, you, if your team changes a lot, if you have a lot of fluctuation, then, then you can't be an agile team, I think. That's a question you have to keep for next session. I will explain to you how it. How it <laughs> yeah. Because, but I think I, yeah. you're right. You're right. But in reality, you have to give the option to have the possibility to leave. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. you're free to come, but you're also free to leave. Yeah. As long as it goes along with um, heavy communication, early communication, I'm almost fine with it. Yeah, it's also uh, goes together with the rapid experimentation. For example, let's let's assume that you go a bit away from Scrum and you experiment with some other uh, pr profiles of of uh, different profiles of people. Uh, experiment also in 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 these roles and responsibilities. Have a different type of of people to experiment uh, in this in this situation. So you also want to make a uh, fast hiring and firing so uh, fail fast because I'm just telling what for example a manager here at, at uh, this this company told me like, let's fail fast with this new uh, new profile of uh, experiment that we, we were launching here for example it's a, a, a new type of role you know uh, to, to, to boost collaboration or something, you know, go a bit away from the scrum master to maybe another profile. So the could logic, be in this. Yeah, the logic is sense making. So now if you, let's say, I give an example uh, in my job, I'm a coach, agile coach, six, eight months a year in a company. So I have a company, I was in company in Paris, I made a huge change, I was planned six months, I stand six months and two weeks. But you will discover, so at the beginning, you make the push, you're helping a lot. You're not really coaching, you're more mentoring and explaining or maybe teaching. And then you have to switch. Then you come start to coach because they're just experimenting. Mm -hmm. And then you will discover after four to five months, the, the mates will say, oh, Pierre, can you s just s stay in your, at your desk? Let us experiment. And I will come afterwards, give you feedback and you tell me if it's okay or not. That's a very, I love this position because this means, Pierre, it's time to go. Because, hey, they are, the children are grow up. Now they are adults. They know how to do it. Will be this perfect? No, but the system is, you know, on his way of experiment, it's okay. 
and you have to leave, this is meaning also you have to leave. If I come as a contractor, my first question, where I am done, the famous definition of done, even for Pierre? my contract, because I don't want to stay forever. Yeah, Pierre? Yeah? Then can you add in the values? Um, sustainability. I can't add it because this is from MIT, man. Well, let's add to MIT. <laughs> <laughs> you, for, you forgot to make the stamp on the slide. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> but it's good. I, I love your reactions, guys. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I come from HR, and I mean, I've seen the let's fire without transparency, and I've I've lived it myself, and and it's such a shame because it it cuts it cuts your links. You know, I mean, if you if you have to let people go due to economic conditions, due to um, projects being cut, and you're being transparent about it, then you the people will still want to come back later. And I think it's it's making a human again human aspect out of um, a reality. You're absolutely correct. This is a huge HI issue. So here the problem is I expecting something more. It's about engagement. How mm. can you engage someone if this person know you can fire him or her in a minute? I'm not engaged. I've never I never put the second gear box, GMA box, right? I just keeping myself self. See if I always have two, three customers. Mm -hmm. So it's complicated. I mean, yes, the, the, the future will be, we are all more likely working like a freelance. Is that good? No. But how is it so? Yes. Because you want to deep dive, maybe go into some kind of mastery. Maybe a company can give you, maybe you can stay 20 years, 30 years. They maybe say, I want to go there to experiment something else. And this should be okay. So I don't. I don't think it's about staying at the company for twenty years. I think it's more like, um, especially as especially as a scrum master or something like that, you have to say very uh, uncomfortable things. You know, you have to say the stuff others are afraid to say, yeah. and and not everyone is uh, confident enough to do this. If is, uh, I don't know his job is on the line correct so the point is here uh, when you make an agile transformation and your agile coach is an internal do you think it's working uh it's hard to say if you're a confident freelancer um you no, no you, you're an internal you're not a freelancer and you have yes, to say every five minutes to your boss that's not okay <laughs> agree agree that's yeah. just so usually when people see this is some kind of metric. I don't, I don't think so. I think it will work. I mean, I'm not, I, even if I'm an internal, I'm not afraid of losing my job or something like that. Uh, usually uh, uh, people say, uh, let me, let me, um, they have to be a really, really good friend with the boss. And the boss uh, he has to be really involved and supportive. But usually it is, why you have to, when I'm starting, hire an external because you can fire an external. Yeah, probably. Yeah, in most cases I would agree. But I would not totally say uh, you can't do it with an internal agent. Yeah, once it's launched. But this is another debate. Yeah. Let's move slightly off the other side, which is always, oh, again, MIT. But not branded. No excuses. <laughs> okay, so what I say is, but this I think is quite interesting. So we have the organization performance in the middle is about our innovation and growth, and customer satisfaction and reputation is about profitability. Is and the tools we use they might use is about iterating rapidly, collaborating fluidly, decision taking with data. Moving fast, obsession over customer, quickly taking advance of opportunities, and working seamlessly across boundaries. So this is more like a summary, right? Did I um, forgot something? Nope. Um, no debates. It's Deborah stuff. It's Deborah stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm a very good, comfortable position here. I don't. I take no risk at all. Okay, so here are my questions. This was my thank you. And maybe if you want something more, so this is the end of, so this is the end with frustration, right? 
a, a very endless frustration. But let's say if I have something else to show you, to show how it really works. And blah, 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 blah. so this is something I'm preparing. It is about to explain how it is. I will go in more fast. It's more about the response, how it works. So we have different way of doing Scrum or doing Agile or what, the Agile methods. Uh, usually people say I'm doing Scrum. Uh, uh, for those who don't know Scrum, Scrum is the most used framework, methodology, whatever, uh, actually in Agile. It's over 60, 70 percent of people doing Agile are using Scrum. So when you Scrum is when you hear about sprints, about product owners, about Scrum masters, and Scrum has to be usually shaped, at the beginning shaped for organization development and used in software development just because of marketing. Yeah, to be, to be fair, uh, I'd rather call it not Scrum, but Scream at most of the companies, more than 80%. Yeah, I prefer what Ken Schreiber said is, this is not uh, Scrum which is shitty, is your Scrum is shitty. <laughs> because it's easy. So you can see it can be used like a process of happening. I just skip this, but here, if you take Agile like, an, uh, uh, um, like a complex adaptive system, you can have setting the stage. You have to set the safe to fail container or what, the, what Mark would say, a system. And the system is protected, mm -hmm. right? So if you have ideas coming into the system, uh, a safe to fail container, and what we're expecting is a couple of options afterwards. And part of the system is what we call iterations or we call sprints. It can be a week or two weeks, no longer it makes no sense, but really a, create a dynamic is let's experiment something. So at the beginning, you should just have an idea, right, of what to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and based on this, you experiment. And then after a while, you get the feedback. And this is time bound. And then you, of all the output, all the options you provide is you select just a couple of them what is interesting, which is who is doing this can be the customers or the users. And in a conversation, oh yes, option one, two, three is good. So usually when your customer come and say, oh, can you do this for me? You say, oh yes, indeed. Don't do this in the, in the perspective he's right. Go in the perspective he's wrong, meaning he doesn't know what he wants. So you need to understand, okay, and you come with options, usually, okay, hey, I understand. We made a prototype with the team. One is about what you want. The second is how we understood what you want. And the third is just between the three. What do you write to like? Say, oh, interesting. You sit differently and you start the conversation mm -hmm. and you give him also or her also the ch chance to change his mind. And you have to consider the customer user as part of the system mm -hmm. and not as an outsider. Yeah. And this shift can be very rapid. But then you create this interaction and you can, you can take these ideas and you go in the first step and, and then you make this option and say, oh, I don't know. Uh, can you please deep dive of my idea? But you can also deep dive on yours. I really don't know, I need a week, but forget the third one. That's okay. So we are deep diving during the week of two and because the customer needs also time to reflect and to digest everything. And then he comes back and then is again, the same thing is, okay, you proceed until you reach a valid outcome. So then he say, okay, you were right, but maybe take this color from my idea into your idea, I think your idea, you're right. Mm -hmm. It's usually that way. <clears throat> so, and the problem is we're not decomposing activities coming from the system, which is the company, which is another system. We're talking with the customer. This is how you, what we call agile is meaning, uh, I have a demand uh, for, for who is coming this demand, or this demand is coming from a project manager. Can I talk to your customer? Oh, I got this demand from a business analyst. Can I meet the business analyst? Mm. And you go to the business analyst. Yeah, for who's coming? Oh, this is coming from the business area. Okay, you go to the business area. Who is the customer? 
that you didn't start before you get the customer. And then you discover that you have all these layers, a lot of interpretation, and you go core to the point, it usually the demand is much more simple how it looks like at the end. Yeah. And this is, I say, for me, is like a farmer's job. Agile is like a farmer. I come in your team on Monday, I give you one euro. I say, you want to do this? Okay, fine, I have no clue, do your job. I come in next week and the next Monday, what have you done with my money? I wrote some specification, give me my money back. Okay, and then you have here the principle is about, so here is really about the system thinking, about interaction of people. If the team, you build a system, and in your system, you have a lot of people coming to spoil your system, meaning you don't have the people in the system really working the system. They're just coming for one hour. Then they work in other projects. They're not in your system. That's not your system. They're all outsiders. And if your team is working together and the manager is coming, giving orders during the system, he breaks the system. He creates confusion in the system. So that's why in Scrum, you say, my sprint is protected. So you have Azure coaches and you have uh, Scrum masters protecting the systems mm -hmm. to get this dynamic into it. So if the, if the company cannot wait during two weeks, then reduce on one week. And, uh, uh, on one day, no, this doesn't matter. It's no project, it's nothing. It's just do whatever you want. So that's it's a problem. That's a big problem because you start to say no to people which are just have the habit to ask and people react what they ask, and now they start to say no. So it's about a safe to fail container where the people are feeling free, they experiment in freedom, and freedom is something you have to learn because it's fear. Is they have to interact together. The information cannot be pushed in the container, so you're not forced. So container is like. A, Uncapsuled, but the information is pulled, meaning if the, the people in the system need information, they get the information. Right? So keep the balance is always the balance between demand and execution. Mm -hmm. It's always the balance between the customer, is what how to build the right thing, how to build it right, and keeping the feedback loop fast so we can learn fast and explain it faster. And so we have here the tools to, to oh, we'll skip this, this is methodological. <coughs> this be quite boring. Here is quite boring. Uh, if you want to have these slides to think about it, just ping me, uh, we'll send it to you out. Okay. Um, the core principle is, this is coming from, wow, this long discussion 10 years ago with Christoph Mattis. He is from uh, Munich. You say, Aja is quite simple, is ask the team, treat people as adults, deliver each time and inspect and adapt. And in complex adaptive system theory and language and jargon is you have to create coherence, you inspect and adapt in this empirical way of moving forward to experiment. And it's a resilient manner. Meaning if a boss or somebody say, I want to have this perfect and, and maybe come here in software or maybe manufacturing, we want to have this perfect each time. Sorry, it's not how it works. Is you have to say, if you cannot do this today, you have to accept it. And everyone. So it's not easy. It's not simple. Mm. Because but it has to be fair. The rules have to be fair. So about transparency is hardcore. And the agents are coherent. They have dynamic components. Um, uh, if you're now, I will kill you, I'll kill you a little bit with the very, very high level thinking. Is um, and that's an introduction from the Nets from maybe another topic if you like it. Is um, in the end, Angel is like the magic roundabout in Swindon. The magic roundabout in Swindon is you have a central roundabout with five, five other roundabouts. In the middle, one roundabout, but turning the other way around. I've seen them somehow. Yeah, and so the idea is here about emergent behavior, and this is based on flocking behavior. So agile is 
a complex adaptive system, a learning loop in a complex adaptive system, but based on flocking behavior. This means a flocking behavior is like the birds flocking together. You don't need a, a very high level skills. You just know to what uh, we need to point to, to a destination, meaning everyone wants to know where to go. We avoid collision. That's why we have the meetings. Hey, it is okay. Mm -hmm. So you get aligned every time. No advanced planning skills are necessary. Is we go there. Okay, go in. So I begin your jump in the water and you go and then, then you move forward and is follow the lines, the lines on the limits of the systems. Okay. Any comments on that? They're all sleeping already. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. Team and still here. D digesting. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no Tillman, Tillman left. He left, yeah, indeed. He, he committed suicide. <laughs> I do have a question. What do you mean exactly with avoid collision? Avoid collision is, uh, when you, you work in IT, right? Yes. Uh, collision is dependencies. Dependency is a, a type of collisions. Um, in teams, uh, you have some kind of collisions is you discover that two guys in the team are working on the same topic. That's a collision. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to, uh, so you have to be very clear on the topic. You have to really to avoid just collision because it happens. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So um, if I put it in my own words, for example, uh, also being very clear about the responsibilities and the tasks, right? So we don't have two people. Mm, not, not only, these are the rules of the games. Uh, and, and, and it's not about responsibility, really. Collision is, uh, I worked on some, on some topic and sometimes happened that two people or two teams are working on the same thing. Usually you have a lot of managers working on the same thing. But if you bring clarity, if you make it transparent, then you can take a decision that can take over. So usually when you have a, co a collision, means you, you have a lack of transparency. Yeah, what's really killing efficiency is two people or two teams working on the same thing without knowing. Yeah. I mean, uh, if, if they know from each other, then it's still fine, I think, if it's kind yeah. of coordinated. I give you another consequence is uh, uh, two years ago in a small company I mentioned to you before, uh, I had a call in a meeting for five meetings the same day from five different uh, senior VPs exactly on the same topic. The same big company in Valov. Uh -huh. Okay, but I saw this, you, but here take an example because I really like these guys here. Uh, not complaining, but then they know me. And, and, but this is what you see everywhere. So we have somebody who's asking, go to the job, can you give me a budget of this? Oh, good idea. And somebody else come, another manager come exactly with the same question, or slightly different, but about the same topic. Is nobody, nobody taking care about this. You're losing a lot of money. So at the beginning, you already sta start with a collision, a risk of collision. Yeah, in such big companies, it happens often, I think, because they are still stuck in the, in the silo world and the different silos have your own yeah. requirements. Were they even aware of the possibility that they might be, uh, might be working on the same thing? Uh, things happen. Um, you discover. So oh, um, uh, another good example is you try to work on a solution but uh, your silo or your team has a certain kind of expertise and you need expertise from other teams. This happened uh, very, very often. And having not this expert in your teams create a collision. Mm. So the whole knowledge should be in the team, so in your system. Because another team is another system. What happens if the, um, the requirement for the knowledge uh, appears during the sprint? Yeah. Then we have to call the expert. If you oh, you hand over. You hand over. Oh, you hand over. Okay. I love to hand over. So I'm going more in the lean minds. I make my lean hat. 
I have the workflow, the team workflow in his value stream and you hand over. I give an example, if you're working in ERP system, also production lines, or if you're working banking systems, you're talking about end-to-end -end processes. Mm -hmm. So a team, an Azure team, should uh, manage a complete end-to-end -end process and so on. Which happened not that usually, usually is not the case, but that's the real problem. Mm -hmm. Is an end-to-end -end process team, then you can then you have to think, okay, then I do the end-to-end -end process, which I'm able to handle in the first iteration. Then you add a second one. It usually, is okay. You have just a small part. You have just to puzzle the activities. So your team is completely virtual. You, could, you cannot test it, and you have a huge amount of dependencies. And one guy who has all the knowledge and everyone asks him, and he loved this position. But this is anti-agile because it's not helping to create the value Same for the company. Yeah. And here is, is, it's not a purpose, it's something we need just to help them to change, to see differently. And here is, like Marco said, is, is we have to think about like a system well, how he behaves. Will a big delay for a special topic, knowledge thing, whatever, which is um, outside the company or relates to an outside the company, is it also in your world called a collision? Yeah. Well, a collision is you define a roadmap in three months. Usually I define three months roadmap altogether to avoid collision. And you see, this three months roadmap is the management scope freeze meaning we are not accepting other projects. Mm. We can work on a project for the next one, not, but not yet. Okay. Usually next day you will have new demands and you start saying no, but you have to avoid this because you know this is uh, not effective. Yeah. Oh, Pierre? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the, if you say no advanced planning skills, what do you mean by advanced planning? So you skills? don't need to plan everything until the next five years on a minute. Okay, okay. Uh, even, even in three months, a, free, a quarterly roadmap, which is on three months, I just expect high level. And usually you, you talk with the guts. Don't open your computer, don't open your PowerPoint. Give you what you're thinking. This is my high priority number one. This is what yeah. is urgent, what is, and you don't need, because if you want to be precise, then one guy is coming, I'm the expert in planning and planning, then you're just hijacking the plan, which is not what brings the value. It's the process that brings the value here. And that's yeah. planning more than plans, right? Here we see, uh, yeah, planning over following a plan. Absolutely. Okay, do I have something else? Okay, this is, can't, no, this is not necessary. Oh yeah. So if you want, what is, what's the time? Um, we lost 10 it. minutes left. Okay. So I will stop here. Um, do you have any questions? Oh, that's a, that's hard. Is there a way to get the slides? Indeed. Uh, the session is, will be recorded and, um, and you will get the slides. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's all on the, if you go on the, on the meetup group, you can see in the communication, we have a, a YouTube channel where all the presentation have, the, the, the former presentation have been recorded. Uh, so you can after, take a look afterwards. And then added yeah. also the, the last week conference on AO which is a model which is coming up. I will introduce it later on. It's about agile organization, is how you build a system. So I will come with this very boring question, but hopefully I'm expecting that Virginia will come to very high level points, <coughs> more about coaching, very lovely way of doing things. And, and, and guys, please also, uh, Azure Praxis is not a solo performance. If you see me uh, proposing a topic means uh, I expect more, <laughs> is I'm bored, I need more, but uh, feel free to propose everything you want. 
this is R, and uh, you have access to how you can plan it, you open, you can propose. This is always Wednesdays. Usually we can one or two Wednesdays a month. That's okay. I would love having a, a, an agenda until October. So I know uh, Dennis is planned. We have again a thing with, a thing with, um, with Virginia. I uh, just share again with you the Trello. Because on the Trello, I propose, you can propose here maybe things you want to have it, right? I would love to talk about. I would love getting feedback about. Maybe I have an idea and you want to talk about your idea so we get the feedback. Um, like here, I put the example, I would love to have feedback about self organization. Okay, I, I wrote the, the thing with uh, Scrum, is Scrum flexible enough, and I just wanted to have some opinions on uh, current, uh, current, let's say current problem, current situation. That's okay. That's can, this can be a great conversation, not only a presentation. And this yeah, is, yeah, maybe. And always, this will be recorded. So every time, so you don't need to take notes, so you can always discuss. And afterwards, I will share the, this content. Sure. Yes. Yeah. And I have also, uh, you can invite, I was thinking about uh, inviting Fleur Maxwell to talk about sport coaching. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'll question. speak to her tomorrow. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Virginia. Yeah. So she's part of our, so Virginia is my coach. So I coach, I train her to be an agile coach. She's training me to be a, 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 an ICF coach. And ICF, what's that? International Coaching Federation. Okay. I was about, how can you say people development coach? Yeah, and, I would and, say that. And Fleur is also part of it. She is an, uh, a former um, Olympic- uh, in Ice skater. Ice skating. Mm -hmm. and she is now a coach for ice skaters. And it's interesting to, we had a, converse, a talk in, in Luxembourg with uh, Virginia about the difference between uh, personal development coaching, systemic coaching, and agile coaching is slightly different. And we expect we have also sport coaching to see the different angles. Okay. <coughs> interesting. I have another mate, he's called Dov. This guy's special, you say agile and Taoism. Okay, why not? Uh, Elsa from Berlin, she's not today here. She is in service design and creative process. We have uh, anne Catherine. she wants to talk from Geneva. Uh, she wants to talk about something very special, about the using the sexual in energy and creativity. Okay, why not? Uh, Judy Rees, uh, remote conversation. Alistair Coburn, who is uh, the head of Aja, this is what I, my wish is. And I plan to make uh, an actual practice with perspective. Are you okay with if I plan? If are you attending if I plan an Android perspective? How to make it better? Yes, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, well. Topics come in from time to time, or or ideas about topics we can discuss. Yeah, and I want also to create an Azure practice, a virtual open space to give. All of you uh, a time to speak okay so we'll prepare this maybe in june or june or maybe september so you like the idea we had um two weeks ago in Mannheim with the open space with the marketplace they played i uh, am yeah, i make this since 10 years okay uh, it's a little bit different on zoom but we did it a couple of times on zoom yeah uh, yes but the idea is we will bring it here and I would love to make it with Virginia. She's my mate. Uh oh. <laughs> my buddy. <laughs> no, no, because it's complicated to try to record. Because I have breakout rooms, meaning I can have four topics in, the, in an hour. This is feasible. I tested also here Trello. So we can create the marketplace on Trello. Mm -hmm. It's much easier than on Google Drive, because maybe sometimes you don't have the permission if you are at work to go and do that, which is okay with Trello. And so we can talk and, and when you're in a, in a breakout rooms, I can't record. So the people in the breakout rooms have to do that. Anyway, okay. So last minute, so I'm stopped sharing. 
I think we are reaching the end in three minutes. Do you like it? Fist of five feedback. One is just not enough. This is this is great. Okay. This is uh, okay. Thank you. I lost my time. Okay, Michael is completely crazy, insane. Sasha is saying, Wah. okay, he's just nice. And the guys here in the audience, okay. But the good thing is, the guys here, we we going now speaking, and then we're going dinner. And maybe if you want to use also, maybe this is for Dennis in, in, in Brazil, uh, like Ulysses, he tried to make uh, also the same event in, in, in Mexico. And I would love to see you as an audience because you can use this. The idea is I want to connect all my networks together. That's my big dream. Anyway. <laughs>